Hi, we just arrived on this job site. This is our first day here. And what we're gonna be doing is widening the driveway here. We're just gonna fill this area in. We've got, the sprinklers have already been removed from the uh, landscaper. So I just gotta dig a little bit more dirt out of here and then uh, compact it, put a little reinforcement in there and we're ready to pour. So it's gonna happen pretty quick. So stay tuned and uh, enjoy the video. Have a good one. All right, so there was a bunch of bushes in here. Initially, it just made a narrow entrance to the driveway. Since I have the Vermeer three foot wide skid steer, I'm gonna use it. It didn't really need it. I mean, you could just hand dig this because there's not a whole lot of dirt coming out. I think I took about maybe a yard and a half of material out of here. And most of it was pretty soft because like I said, they had bushes in here. I just got into the hard pack, just, just touched the hard pack below um, the topsoil, which is nice because that's what you want to do. You want to get all that loose out of there. So you're sitting on something pretty, pretty tight. I'm gonna modify that curb too a little bit. I wanna go straight down from the house. So I'm gonna kind of freehand that little rolled mow strip curb. I'm gonna freehand a little portion of that back to where it meets uh, the new driveway addition. Now what I did was I just maintained the same slope on the drive when I just transferred it all the way across to the house. So the driveway had pretty good slope on it, cross slope away from that building. So I just uh, took a straight edge and just followed it right on over. You know, if you change angles on the addition from the existing driveway, then it, then it really kind of shows up and it looks like a, you know, an afterthought. So if you just maintain that same slope, it looks more original. So here's what I was talking about, uh, moving that mo strip and just free uh, forming it and free handing that little, um, it's like a whale tail basically is what a lot of people call them. Because it kind of has that little fin going up. I just got the outside forms and then I'll just shape it with a hand float when I put the concrete in. But actually the um, that curb out there was done with a, a machine. It's a curb machine for planters like that. It's just a mortar, a mortar mix. There's no rock in it it's real, and it goes in real dry. Now we're just cutting some, da cutting the bars. That's a uh, fiberglass rebar. putting them at about 18 inch centers both directions. We got the rebar, automatic rebar tire from Makita. It makes a big difference from hand tying for sure. This house uh, looks like it was freshly painted, so I decided to put some plastic on it. Put a couple chairs here and there underneath. We ran the plate compactor over all this too. In this particular case, I'm not dowling into the driveway there. reason I'm not dowling is because there's so many cracks in that existing driveway already and it's pretty old 
it's definitely going to be one of those things where that'll come out before this part does that I'm doing. Because, you know, in the original drive, you know there's no reinforcement in there, nothing. So I want these kind of separated and not dowled together. And if you notice all the cracks coming off the existing, we're going to follow all those cracks with um, joints. We're going to wet joint right off of every crack across this. Now, right there, I'm using the four foot Milwaukee red stick as my screed. I also have the six footer for the longer areas. But they're really nice to use. They got hand holds on them, so easy to grip. Plus, you can look at the level if you have to, just make sure that uh, everything's going the way you want it to. So you can see by using the pump, there's not really any splattering going on. So it's a pretty clean operation. Like take a look at the plastic and the house. There's really no splatters at all. That's the, another beauty of uh, not tailgating or wheelbarrowing. You just, uh, you're, you're clean up and uh, everything stays cleaner. Now that's a walking edger there, 10 inch wide, half inch radius. The reason I was going the other direction, as you noticed before, it was just to get the concrete off of the existing concrete, kind of clean it up, expose where I really got to run that edger, and then have a nice clean surface, minimizes my cleanup. Now when you do run that edger backwards and you're scraping off the existing concrete, you don't want to throw any excess back into the new concrete and work it in because a lot of times it has dirt in it that's attached to the old concrete and you're scraping it off, throwing it in the new concrete. Well, there's, you just don't want to do that. You just got to kind of dispose of that excess. <laughs> Here's a funny float, fiberglass. Now I've got a three foot long cutter and you notice I'm putting it off the corner of the house. I'm hitting all the joints on the existing and I'm lining it up with the cracks in the driveway, those joints. And it was kind of nice because they're pretty well, they're evenly spaced, the cracks on the existing. So I just brought them right on across. They might have been off a little bit, but that's where it's going to want to transfer. Like when cars drive over this, and most of the weight's going to be on the existing unless they, you know, get over onto this, which it's not going to matter. But each one of those big sections in the driveway is going to move independently from each other as the car drives over each crack. They shift a little bit differently, and that's going to transfer over to the slab that's touching. That's why you want to continue the joints off the existing cracks. There's one crack I missed right here on this end, but I think I'm close enough to it where it's still going to work. I ran that two and a half inch deep cutter which is ideal because it's a good straight edge it's three foot long and it really breaks the concrete down deep separates the aggregate so no matter what kind of finish joint I put on the top of that deep cutter it's going to have to crack there because the aggregate is no longer uh, in there it's separated it's, the aggregates aren't overlapping each other that's the idea of the, the deep cutter guaranteed crack points now if I didn't use that deep cutter and I was just running like a quarter inch deep or half inch deep you really got to be 25% of the depth of whatever you're putting in for 
a control joint to be effective. So that's why you really have to you know, run it deep initially and then fit your finish joint on top. But yeah, you noticed I was brooming that, and that was 50% horsehair, 50% nylon broom. It's just uh, beautiful for concrete. And now I'm running that broom along the side of the house because you can't really get right against the house just pulling the broom straight off of it. Like if I didn't run that broom straight, you would have had a, a bald spot along the house there. So this just kind of evens it up, makes it uniform. I like this load. Uh huh. Well, a little slow, but we're talking. <laughs> It turned out real nice. There's that little roll curb. I just kind of hand shaped and blended it out straight as I got to meet uh, the flat driveway edition. Now in about 45 days I would say, maybe a little longer depending on uh, weather temperatures and stuff and rain. If there's, if, uh, that's gonna be how long it takes for this to cure out really, to the white color and matte kind of get closer to the color range of the existing take probably 45 to 90 days i would say Anyway, thank you for watching the video. If you like these type of videos, make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button. That way you'll be notified as soon as we upload the next video. Have a good one. Bye.